Hello, dear ones. Are you all there? Yes. Shall we start our revision? Of course. Let us start our revision. Have you gone through the previous sessions? You might have gone through. I don't believe it. Okay. So yesterday, what we have learned, just we will recall that what we have learned yesterday. What was the yesterday session? Yesterday, we have learned about cell organelles. What are cell organelles? And uh, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi apparatus. The discovery of Golgi apparatus, how it is being named, what are the function of the Golgi apparatus. Today, let us see about lysosomes. So, what are lysosomes? You can see here the image of the lysosomes. So, as you see here, it's a single membrane vesicles which are responsible for cleaning the cell. So, it's a single membrane vesicles that which is responsible for cleaning the cell. So, they can digest any foreign material. Any foreign material. Foreign material in the sense, what does it mean? Such as food or bacteria and even the worn out cell organelles. Okay, it can clean out. It can digest. Then how can lysosomes digest any foreign material that entering into the cell? How can it digest? So, they are capable of doing so because it is having a digestive enzymes. They are having, they are capable of digesting the enzymes. How? They will be breaking down the materials and digesting the these enzymes will be breaking the materials and then they will be able to digest them. They digest them. And there these enzymes are being synthesized. These enzymes are being synthesized in rough endoplasmic reticulum and it is packaged into lysosome by Golgi bodies. Golgi bodies is a cell organelle. Then why lysosome is called as suicide bags? We do often call lysosome as suicide bag. Why it is called so? Because it has its cells on material when it gets damaged or when it gets uh, dead. It has its own mechanism. The lysosome bursts out and it digests its own cell. It has its own mecha mechanism. When it is dead, or damage, what happens? There are chances that lysosome gets bursted out and thus digesting its own cell. That's what the function of uh, lysosomes are. You can see here the membrane, the proteins and enzymes in the lysosome. Now, next we will see mitochondria. The next cell organelle, let us learn about mitochondria. You can see here the image of mitochondria. What is mitochondria? It is a double membrane organelle which has its own DNA and that's why often it is called as semi-autonomous organelle. So this uh, mitochondria has a double membrane organelle and it, it has its own DNA. That's what it is termed as semi-autonomous organelle. This semi-autonomous organelle requires in order to carry out several activities. So this, this cells require energy. So whenever whatever we do, we need energy to move, to push the things, to pull the things. Whatever we do, we need energy. So this cells and a cell requires energy, we know that. In order to carry out several activities uh, for the cell, it requires energy. And this energy is generated by mitochondria. This energy, from where this energy we will receive, cell has to carry different activities. We have learned different cell organelles will be performing different activities. So for this function, this energy, where it is being generated, it is generated in mitochondria. That's what it is termed as the powerhouse of the cell. That's what mitochondria is known as the powerhouse of the, uh, of the cell. Often it is asked in the competitive examinations as well as uh, uh, in our school examination also it is being asked why the mitochondria is termed as the powerhouse of the cell. Why it is termed as powerhouse of the cell? Because it is generating energy that which is uh, required for the cell's activities. Hope it is clear. Then we can say mitochondria are the site of cellular respiration. This is the site of cellular respiration. 
they use oxygen from the air to oxidize the carbohydrates and thereby it will be releasing energy. They use oxygen from air to oxidize the carbon dioxide and thereby releasing the energy. What are the energy currencies of the cell? The mitochondria will be generate ATP. What is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate which are energy giving molecules. Adenosine triphosphate is the energy giving molecules of the cell. That's what it is called as uh, energy currency. ATP is termed as energy currency. What is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. And this mitochondria has two membranes. Outer membrane. So here outer membrane and inner membrane. Outer membrane as well as inner membrane. Outer membrane are porous in nature. Outer membrane is porous in nature. While inner membrane are deeply folded. You can see here the inner membrane are deeply folded. The inner membrane of mitochondria are called cluster. You can see here this villi, uh, fing uh, finger like structure, the villi, the inner folded membrane that is termed as cluster. What does it facilitate? It facilitates generation of ATP molecules. What is ATP? Energy currency. What is ATP? Full form of ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. So it will be facilitating generation of ATP molecules as it has a larger surface area. As it has larger the inner pointers holding the a larger surface area and it will be generating ATP. So the mitochondria is clear to you. We will learn how to draw the mitochondria. The next cell organelle that which we are going to learn is plastids. What are plastids? What are plastids? Plastids are also just like mitochondria. It is also a double membraned organelle which has its own DNA. Mitochondria also we have learned it has its own DNA. So just like mitochondria and it has its own DNA as well as ribosomes. What is the main function of ribosome? Yesterday also we have learned. What is the main function? Protein synthesis. Okay, so plastids will be existing only in the plant cells. That is the peculiarity. That is the uh, difference. Okay, the plastids will be existing in the plant cells. Depending upon the type of the function, they will be classified as you can see here in the image. You just see it. It is being uh, divided into etioplast, chloroplast, chromoplast, proplastid, eucoplast, amyloplast, elioplast and proteinoplast. Let us learn the differences between the chromoplast and the leucoplast. You can see here the chromoplast as well as the leucoplast. What are the main differences between the chromoplast and the leucoplast? Chromoplast will be colored in nature and it contains a pigment that is called chlorophyll. Chromoplast is colored in nature and it contains a pigment called chlorophyll while leucoplasts are colorless in nature. So it does not have any color, no color exists in leucoplast. Chromoplast will be containing a pigment termed as uh, chlorophyll and this pigment causes photosynthesis in the plants. We have learned in the primary classes photosynthesis. Okay, the, it causes photosynthesis in the plants. Leucoplast we have learned it is the colorless liquid. Okay, this, by nature it is colorless and it will be acting as storage spaces of the cells. So it will be uh, acting as storage spaces in the cells. And here uh, in the chromoplast uh, this uh, chromoplast is causing photosynthesis. And the next main difference is that it will be containing orange as well as yellow pigments. While leucoplast contains starch, proteins, oil, etc. Okay, leucoplast will be containing starch, proteins, and oil. And uh, chloroplast can be further divided. Uh, and also leucoplast can be further divided into myoplast, dioplast, proteinoplast and eleuroplast. We will see each one in details. What are they? Now let us see the classification of the plastics. As I have told, uh, the leucoplast is divided into amyloplast, dioplast and proteinoplast. You can see here myloplast, dioplast and proteinoplast. So amyloplast they are found in tubers. 
where is it found? It is found in tubers, cotyledons, and endosperms in the plants. It is usually found in the tubers, cotyledons, and endosperms of the plants. And what is it storing? It will be storing always starch. Oh, which one? Which plant? Oh, ameloblast. Okay, ameloblast will be storing, used to store starch. And next uh, classification is of plastids is uh, elaioplast. You can see here the image of elaioplast. Is it clear? Yeah. They are found in the epidermal cells of the plants. We know that epidermal plants, epidermal layer means the outer layer of the plants. So they will be always storing oil. Why ameloblast will be storing starch? Here the elaioplast will be storing oil. And the next one is proteinoplast. Where is it found? It is found in the seeds and in the nuts. Where is it found? It is found in the seeds as well as in the nuts. And what does they store? They store proteins. So these three I hope it is clear to you. Ameloplast, elaioplast and proteinoplast. Uh, in ameloplast, starch is being stored. In elaioplast, oil is being stored. And in proteinoplast, proteins are being stored. Is it clear? Next, we will learn about the chloroplast. You can see here the image of chloroplast. So, chloroplast are also cell organelles that will be conducting photosynthesis in plants. These are also cell organelles conducting photosynthesis in the plants. Chloroplast is derived from two Greek words, chloro and plast, which means green and plants respectively. Chloro means green, plast means plants. Uh, it is derived from a Greek word, chloroplast. This chloroplast will be containing photosynthetic pigments called chlorophyll. This chloroplast contains the pigment called chlorophyll along with lipids, carbohydrates, minerals, DNA, RNA, grana, hylopods and strom. You can see here what does it contain? Okay, it contains photosynthetic pigments called chlorophyll and along with that lipids it contains, carbohydrates it contains, minerals, DNA, RNA, grana, hylopods and strom. What are the main functions of the chloroplast? The main function is conduction of photosynthesis in the plants. Another function is protein synthesis. Another function is releasing the oxygen. The next function storage of starch. These are the main functions of the chloroplast. Can you repeat? Can you tell what are the functions? Yes. Conduction of photosynthesis, protein synthesis, releasing, releasing the oxygen and storing the storage of the starch. Hope it is clear to you. Now, let us learn about the light-dependent reactions in photosynthesis. Light-dependent reactions in photosynthesis. So, during photosynthesis, what is happening? Chlorophyll will be absorbing the light energy. The chlorophyll will be absorbing the light energy, which is then used for molecules ATP and NADPH. So, we know what is ATP, what is NADPH. What is ATP? Adenosine triphosphate. What is NADPH? Nicotinamide, adenine, dinucleotide, phosphate. So, during the photosynthesis, chlorophyll will be absorbing the light energy, which is then used um, for the two molecules, ATP as well as the NADPH. Now, you can see in, in the image of chloroplast, hyalopoids. Okay, so you can see here the hyalopoids. Can you see? Yes, it is clear. So, what does it look like? They are pillow-like shaped compartments in the chloroplast. It is pillow-like shaped compartments in the chloroplast. So, the light dependent reactions in photosynthesis will be taking place in the hyalopods. Where does this light reaction takes place? In the hyalopods. It looks like a pillow-like structure. Next, you can see here the stroma. Okay, the stroma, aqueous fluid. Can you see? Stroma. So, it is a fluid filled matrix in the chloroplast. It is a fluid filled matter in the chloroplast. It is colorless fluid. It is colorless fluid that will be containing all the enzymes that are needed for the light dependent reaction in the photosynthesis. So, this contains all the enzymes that, enzymes that it requires for the photosynthesis. Next, you can see here the grana. 
Okay, what is the function of grana? The stacks of thylakoids that is termed as grana. Grana means stacks of thylakoids. Where is it found? They are found in the stroma. They provide a large surface area so that uh, whatever the, uh, the rea uh, reactions required for the photosynthesis. They are providing large surface area so that the reactions of photosynthesis can take place easily. They will be providing large surface area so that the reactions of the photosynthesis can take place. Is it clear? So we have discussed now regarding thylakoids in chloroplast, chlorophyll in chloroplast, stroma, then grana. Is it clear? We will learn the next cell organelle is about vacuoles. What are vacuoles? Vacuoles are the places where the cells can store the liquids and solids. Vacuoles means they can store, where the cells can store all the liquids as well as the solids. They are present both in the plant cell as well as in the animal cells. But the plant cells will be showing the bigger in size than the animal vacuoles. You can see animals, small, small vacuoles, several vacuoles will be present in the animal cell. While in the plant cell you can see a bigger vacuole that which is present in the cell. Can you see? Yes. So what are the main differences between the plant cell vacuoles and animal cell vacuoles? We will let us see the differences between the plant cell vacuoles and uh, animal cell vacuoles. The plant cell vacuoles will be storing all the material that it is required for the plant to stay alive, such as water and uh, the other minerals, nutrients, etc. So, animal cell vacuoles contain food items that which is the, in the unicellular organisms. So, animal cell vacuoles will be containing food items, mainly in the unicellular organisms. In plant cell vacuoles, it will be it is stored uh, in the form of uh, water or in the form of starch or in the form of minerals, nutrients, so that the uh, plants may stay alive. Is it clear? The second main difference between the plant cell vacuoles and animal cell vacuoles is that it maintains the turgidity in the plant cell. So these vacuoles, plant cell vacuoles will be maintaining the turgidity in the plant cell. Animal cell vacuoles, what will happen? It will be expelling the water and waste out of the cell. In the animal cell, it is functioning as expellation of the water based out of the cell. The next difference between the plant cell vacuole is that it, uh, we know that in plant cell it is generally big and it is present single cell, single large vacuole. While in animals, they are contain several vacuoles, several small small vacuoles will be present. In the plant vacuoles, plant, uh, in the plant cells, vacuoles will be present in the center of the cell. While in the animal vacuoles, it is scattered throughout the cell. Is it clear the differences between the animal cell vacuole as well as the plant cell vacuole? Uh, now, we will see the types of vacuoles. What are the types of vacuoles? They are sap vacuoles, contractile vacuoles and food vacuoles. Let us see what is the difference between the sap vacuoles, contractile vacuoles and food vacuoles. First, we will see the sap vacuoles. What is sap vacuoles? These vacuoles, you can see here the image of sap vacuoles. These vacuoles are filled with a fluid called vascular sap. These vacuoles are filled with a fluid called vascular sap. What does this fluid contain? It contains amino acids, it contains salt, it contains, it contains sugar, it contains protein, it contains water, it contains waste materials. Okay, so, so many things it just contains. What does it contain? Amino acids, salt, water, proteins, waste materials, all these things it contains. Then soft vacuoles are separated from the cytoplasm by a semi-permeable membrane called as tonoplast. You can see here. Turn of plus by a semi permeable membrane is being separated. What is the main function of this? Their main function is to allow the rapid exchange between the cytoplasm and the surrounding environment. The rapid exchange, the sudden rapid means fast exchange between the uh, cytoplasm as well as the surrounding environment. A number of sap while vacuoles are found in young plant cells. Plenty of sap vacuoles are found in the young plant cells and animal cells. 
in mature plants the small vacuoles combine together to form a single central large vacuole in the mature plants is it clear next let us see the contractile vacuoles so contractile vacuoles where does we find this contractile vacuoles it is in the protistant and as well as in the algal cells in the fresh water we can see this contractile vacuoles so the membrane of the contractile vacuoles is highly extensible okay the membranes will be highly extensible and collapses very fast it collapses very soon these vacuoles will be responsible for the osmoregulation what do you mean by osmoregulation maintaining the water content in the cells expansion receiving as well as the excretion okay osmoregulation means maintaining the water inside the cell so that is the main function of the contractile next we let us see about the food vacuole where is this food vacuoles uh, found these are found in several protozoan and also the several lower type of animals okay this food vacuoles are found in the uh, cells of protozoan as well as in the several lower animals so food vacuoles what is it responsible for for the digestion of the food inside the cells as they contain enzymes so digestion it is the uh, main responsibility of this uh, function of food vacuoles of uh, digestion so it is containing a certain enzyme so it digests so this digested food will be passing into the cytoplasm that it is found in the single cell organ or organelles such as amoeba etc you know that there is a lot of organisms we have learned the examples are amoeba so i hope it is clear to you we have learned today uh, the vacuoles food vacuoles contractile vacuoles and sac vacuoles and also we have learned the cell organelle mitochondria its function where is this energy created from why is it called power power of the cell and also we have learned lysosome the function of the lysosome why it is termed as suicidal dies hope everything is clear to you tomorrow we will continue with the next cell organelle the remaining cell organelles uh, until that bye thank you so much